Okay, here's the block, the size of block that I want to use on that uh, road. In order to lay it out, I'm not going to use any uh, rulers or numbers or anything. I'm just, first of all, I got to find the center of my block. I'm just going to take a stick here and find the center. By going corner to corner without using a measurement, I can intersect the corners and give me the center of the other line, which will be the center of the block. Okay, now I want to get the width of the block marking on my stick here. Now I want to establish the center of the stick. The intersection point there. All right. Now I have this, this is the point here, the center. Now if I wanted to roll this block around, I could make it round. One way to be to, to strike an on it here and shave off this part of the block. The block would be round, so it would roll. What I got to do, if I want to keep the block square, I have to take this dimension of the block place it over here to make it the same size. So if you can get the point, I would make this block round by adding this amount in the center. So I got to mark that amount. So I got the three things I need. I have the difference, I have the center, and I have the width of the block. That's all I need to lay out that road. Okay, stepping over here to a piece of plywood I can lay out my pattern with. First thing I have to do is establish a working line, which could be pretty simple to do. Something like this. Just parallel the end of the board. That's how I test the material road out of. Now I have to establish the center. See this? Yep, this is okay. establish the center. And up here. Now I'm gonna mark down the difference between the horizontal diameter and the vertical diameter. Put a nail there to hold my sticks since I don't have any help there. Okay, we went in and found the sticks a little more flexible. I'm going to transfer the marks over to it. Get it back in there. Now, the center of the block is on the nail there. And I want to bring these two points back to the line. So that they don't have three hands, I have to. Put another nail in. Okay, put that on the mark. The edge of the block on the center. Very close. We'll work it around in there. There's my layout for my road right there. The arc of the road. I'm going to add this piece onto that block when I roll it. And there's the length or the diameter of the block, which we'll be rolling on the road. And I raise the block that much so the center line of my block doesn't go up or down. So, in order to roll the block over the road, I don't have to lift it. Another thing I can show you here is little proportional measurements.
proportional work. Let's say I want to make a square point here, and let's say a 52 degree angle on there. Oh, let's take my, my pencil. Would be a good dimension here, yep. All right, I'm just going to mark out five segments of my pencil on this board. Two. I'm just going to lay out a 3, 4, 5 here for you. Starting point. Going out three segments. One, two, three. A vertical. I'm going to take four segments. One, two, three, four. A little arc there. Now, five segments from this. I'm going to intersect that line. Now this gives me a 90 degree angle. This is typical 3, 4, 5. I'll show you how I do it. If you don't know. Three segments, four segments, five second segments. This angle here, 90 degrees. This angle over here, 52 degrees, which is really close to the outside angle of the pyramid. Which I fact I think it was the angle of the pyramid. Now, move the camera a little bit here. Now I'm gonna just draw, since we established a 90 degree angle. I'm going to go a two segments and four segments. One, two, three, four. Now this angle, believe it or not, is the angle of the interior ramps of the pyramid, 26 degrees. That's just a one, two angle. One unit of rise, two units run. I use two and four, but it's the same, same thing. Proportional measurements. So I got the inside ramp angles and the outside angle. No tape measure. I just completed my first attempt at rolling a block on the round road. That's what I showed you there. And I wanted to give you a little detail on what I did with the road. You see, this is the layout I used from the one I uh, showed you how to make it. And then uh, I used double plywood on each side and I set some 2x4s in the center, recessed them a little bit, put some polyurethane on them, protect them from the weather, and also put a sandy surface on it. And on the other side of the block, I got this rope. The rope to, is to come in contact with the sand and keep it from slipping on the road. My first road was round just like this or elliptical shaped somewhat uh, rather than perfectly round. And uh, what happened when I would try to use the, the round surface, the block would slip at the start and then that would create problems. That's why I went with a segmented road. Now I'm going back to the original road and adding some traction here. Uh, the uh, original design of uh, the original road I started with seems to work real well. It's real smooth. You can see by the demonstration there. And the, uh, the rope works well in keeping traction so the block doesn't slip when it's climbing the road. And also the momentum, once you get it started, I want to keep on going because the momentum really ha is helpful there. Also, I added some cleats to keep my block in the center of the road because I am using the block for counterweight. If it went to one side or the other, it would affect the uh, position of the counterweight. This is going to make it easy. It took me 
almost five minutes to shift my weight before one end of the block to the other, my counterweight. And uh, now it's just going to take me a few seconds. So this should really pick up the speed of how quickly I can move the the main block here. Okay, I got a beautiful number of day to work with here. It's been about a month since I poured the main block. I had to wait the month in order for the block to get uh, uh, proper curing. Okay, you notice I put my center board in place this time ahead of time. And I'm going to try to use the counterweight. Last time I rolled the block up, that was mostly for demonstration, but I believe this is going to be a lot easier on me this time. And uh, since I got my counterweight in place, I can walk it back and forth, removing pressure from the ends of the form and start to remove them two by fours down there. And I should be able to walk the block right off of my formwork.